Hi ho Lou. This is Chris over here, the Zed right here. We are here to virtually taste wine with you. Actually, we will actually be tasting wine. We're, do we're doing the thing. You on the other side are the virtual. Uh -huh. Virtual, yes. Although they're actually tasting while watching this, so. So yeah, that's not virtual either, huh? That's real. No, it's the interim, I guess. Mm, that that gap in between. Mm -hmm. Well, since you can't be here in person with us on Thursday at 6 p.m., you get to do it at home, which may be even better. It might be far superior. Although you may hear a curse word in this presentation. Well, we, we've proven that, that it's no longer a safe mm -hmm. haven. But I, I meant we're back to one. We got one in a row without cursing. Well, I don't... We didn't curse last time. We didn't either. curse last time, but... You know, I don't know why. This really isn't a family-friendly thing or an age. Because, I mean, I you have like to I, be 21 to drink. I want to be professional, though. Gosh darn it. Well, we made it about 40 or 50 episodes anyhow. Anyway, so... Uh, yeah, last week, on the good. yeah, last week, uh, yeah, we had that, what am I doing here? Last week, we had that very special guest, Mr. Ben Webb, the owner of the winery, the owner of Fish. I think he had a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he did too. I think he was um, uh, caught between the middle of two uh, jabbering knuckleheads. True but, enough. Um, I think next time he'll be more prepared for our mm -hmm. style, if you will. The banter. The banter. And we had been um, crushing that night. And there's been a lot of activity in the, in the in the cellar. We got some bottling coming up. We got all kinds of stuff fermenting. And, yeah, stuff like that. The glare's a little... I'm trying to get it at an angle here where you can see. This, of course, uh, we do on, Thurs on Thursday nights. We do tastings of international wines. We do four of them in person. We Thank do two you. of them virtually here. And the idea is, as a Yatkin Valley winery... We want you to understand why Yakin Valley wines are special because we're going to taste all of the wines of the world and then you know why Yakin Valley has its place. And uh, interesting, we just got a big burst of sun through the rain clouds. And it's been storming all day. Yeah. It was actually went from storming to immediately bright. That's beautiful. Um, I guess we're the rainbows, right? And here's the gold at the end of the rainbow. So we have a beautiful Sauvignon Blanc that we're serving up this weekend. Or, I guess Thursday is not quite the weekend, but you get what I'm saying. This week, we are serving uh, from a great Sancerre producer. This is Hubert Bouchard. We, Chef Chris and I have served his Sancerre countless times at the chef's table because it, it seems like about once every four chef's table, there's a need for Sancerre. There is. There is. And oftentimes, we... Uh, we pick Mr. Bouchard. So, I mean, there's a, there's lots of different styles, but his styles just seem to fit your cuisine for some reason. Well, I think it's also because his wines are so over-the-top good that, you know, you can pretty much trip on a brick and, and something good is going to be with this outstanding wine. Mm. So, Mr. Uh, Bouchard, he only has about 152 acres in terms of, of big more time winemaking. That's really not a lot of acreage, but you can do a lot with 152 acres. He is a Sauvignon Blanc specialist and mainly in the Sancerre region, but he has properties that basically span about eight different communes in that area. This happens to fall outside of Sancerre region, so it's just called a Vin du Paz. So it's, it's, it's basically outside of a, a named region, and it is still 100% Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire Valley, this area that we love so much for Sauvignon Blanc. And th so this, I almost considered it, I mean, this is not an actual term, but it's like declassified Sancerre. You have the guy that makes great Sancerre, you have Sauvignon Blanc, you're in the Loire Valley. <laughs> I mean, it has all the makings to be Sancerre. The difference here is this is more designed for daily consumption. Uh, the price point is wonderful. We're looking at a mere 16 bucks. And what a value. Yeah, you get this great winemaker creating um, a really drinkable, if, if that's a word, I guess it is. You're but coming up with all sorts of words. Yeah, I mean, whatever. I like Let's it. just throw them out there, see if they stick. The, 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 the hallmark of, of Sancerre, of course, is minerality. And Chef, have you had a chance to taste it? Uh, quite a few. The nose is fascinating. Isn't it? It tastes, it smells sweet. It's like it a does. honeysuckle mm -hmm. and, and yeah. vanilla and, and just, 
Yeah, there's all kinds of fruit on melon, it. Melon, lots yes. of melon, Tons. overripe melon. Yeah, it's a honeydew. Kiwi. Well, there's kiwi, yeah, absolutely, florality all florality over. Florality all day long, lime. But then when you taste it, it's it's dry. It's very uh, it's very sap blancish. You know, it's it it, it mm. gives the you know, the acid just, mm -hmm. you know, goes right to work. So the nose is much different than the palate before. Mouth watering. Mouth and, watering and a little bit, of, little bit of pithiness at the end. It really is a, just an insane value. The, the name is very interesting, too. This was named for the three daughters. Uh, so it's Les Carassons. And so they took the names of Caroline, Isabel, and Anne, and or Anne, I'd say on, but, um, and combined the three names of the daughters to create um, um, a name. Since, you know, this is a, a, a Vin du Paz wine, it's, it's just basically considered a French table wine. And so they made it a little more special by naming after daughters. And, and it does came from, comes from the same, uh, basically 10 acres. They always harvest from that same 10 acres. So it's very consistent. And it's very, very delicious. And uh, if you're looking for something to enjoy literally all the time and never, it's even a twist off, so you can even enjoy it riding down the road. Um, or probably, a picnic. I mean, that's what I meant. A picnic. I meant, yeah, a picnic. That's what I meant. Oh, so. I forgot my wine to at the picnic. Yeah. Then, then you're covered. I hope the authorities don't kick in the door and drag me out of here for saying that. But you, you get we what I'm saying. We would have more views if they did. That's We would probably get up to 40 <laughs> views for that. Absolutely. There would be a task force. But this is absolutely what you, what, what you should be expecting from a Sauvignon Blanc and the price is insane. Chef, I know I clued you in on to the varietal, but uh, what are your thoughts on the overall performance of this? I'm going to go A+. Plus. Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely A+. Plus. And, and of course... I don't think everybody can make, well. It is crazy. I've pretty. never had a $16 Sancerre this elegant. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is lovely. So, I mean, I just don't see. It's surprising how much fruit is in it. It's a crazy amount of fruit. And the mineral is not in the front, which is what you normally expect from the Loire. The, the fruit is really fruit forward. It's outstanding. It is very balanced. I mean, just a great wine. Just a great wine. Mm. And and this could outpair a traditional Sablon, in my opinion. And I would choose this any day of the week over uh, Marlboro. Oh yeah, it's I mean just, it has so, so much so more much versatility and balance. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could it could really outpair almost anything in its class. Mm. I'm just gonna keep drinking. Yeah, well, what I you mean, got there, Chef? Well, how about this? Why don't you try? This is this is what's in your box at home. Well, you can tilt it up a little bit. Okay, so it is. This is what your box should look like. If it doesn't, just send your complaints to Ed. Ed, yeah, send them to me. And my address is one two three four North Pole, uh, in care of Santa Claus and the Six Elves. Mm -hmm. well, so yeah. you've got Danzinger from Chapel Hill Creamer. We love this cheese. Soft, What's soft, that, Chefy. What's that? What is this? Poached pears and almonds. Holy cow! And uh, sunflower micro sprouts. So we've got our beautiful Danzinger, which is a cow's milk, soft, very brie esque. Um, <clears throat> we've got some uh, white wine and rice vinegar poached pears, some toast, olive oil toasted almonds, and some uh, micro sunflowers from Barefoot Garden. Hmm. I think the Danzinger eats with more complexity than a brie. <clears throat> now, we, we have a couple of Brie-style cheeses from our local vendors. Of course, you have the Green Hill and you have the Carolina Moon. But I think the Danzinger, I think there's a cider brush on that, too. Uh, but it has more character, in my opinion. It's funny when you said that, because as soon as the the Saab Blanc hit my tongue, the, the brine of the cheese mm. became extremely pronounced. Mm. And I was immediately thinking of Brie. But, you know, the, I, always, I always find that Brie... The, the cheese on the inside of, of the of the rind isn't that pronounced in flavor. No, it's more butter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But all these artisan cheese that you get that are done in a brie style, the cheese is louder than the um, the rind. 
But interesting enough, as strong as this cheese is, and it is strong, it is strong. The rind really pops when you drink the Sauvignon Blanc, and the, and, the, and that's the that's the intention, and that's what the interplay of these fruits and acids in the wine get in the interplay of the fruits and acids and textures of the food. The uh, you know not a lot of spice on these pears. I did differently. These were the ones I did for the chef's table. Uh, so these aren't the, the same that we do for a couple of our dishes downstairs. So I wanted more of a neutral pear, where the pear, you know, the other pears that I poach, I put a lot of, a lot of things in, and so we get a lot of spice and and uh, aromatics out of this. I wanted more of a, of the true, I wanted the texture of the poach, but the flavor of the pear. And I think with the Sav Blanc, that's the winner, and the almond as well. You could probably do the pears and almonds by themselves with this, with the Sav Blanc, but the cheese brings it home. Oh, and those micros for the Sav Blanc? We even had someone... Boom. I mean, people think they're a garnish. They're not a garnish. Mm -hmm. they're, they're flavor. They're full flavor, actually. Yeah. I mean, we call them micros only because of their size. Their flavor is actually more uh, intense uh, than are the, the, the larger size counterparts. So... Enjoy that, I know you are. Yeah, this is a, what a treat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, we had a huge chef's table Saturday night, 18 folks. And uh, they were, well, the four that we had yeah, four Friday, Friday night were incredibly, incredibly complimentary. <clears throat> they had a big time. I enjoyed getting to know both of those couples <clears throat> as well. That was, a, that was a fun night. They had actually been to Commander's Palace, the Sir. French Laundry and said that this was by far a better culinary uh, ex, um, expression, experience, interactions. They were just complimentary beyond belief. It was really, really nice. Um, how about this, Chef? We're going from extremely crisp white to now we're going to get to kind of a, a full... Technically, this is not considered a, a completely gigantic grape like cab but Nero Diablo brings a lot to the plate now I kind of feel like it's it's one of those grapes that can be just about anything it has full fruit it has sneaky full tannins although you won't really ever say that this is overly tannic it has really high acidity but you never say it's out of balance um it just it has plenty of alcohol too, by the way. Thank God. Um, yeah, um, I can't remember. All right, it says 13 and a half, but it's more now, I guarantee it. So this is the famous red grape from the island of Sicily. And it's one of the most important indigenous grapes to the whole country of Italy, in my opinion. It really is a, a definitive grape of, of terroir, of a region. And it's a grape that I think should be in every everybody's cellar because this this we're having a 2016 right now and when you taste this you're going to see why i love it even more than just as it's aging you know it, it's just as good fresh don't get me wrong mm. but this is a very ageable wine and a lot of people just don't realize what a value of this is i mean these all their wines are under 30 bucks you can't really find one that's above 30 bucks and typically speaking, they're all really high quality. Um, you don't see a ton on the shelves, of course. You do need a sommelier or, or a boutique wine merchant to, to get these to you. But it should be something that we expect. And the more we expect, the more we'll get, right? Absolutely. And that's a great philosophy mm -hmm. uh, on, on so many things, but especially with your wines. Regalia, or Regalili is the, the producer here. Um, this is the Lemurri. Uh, this is a specific um, um, offering. They have a lot of different Nero Diablos, and I'm grateful for that because I, I do enjoy the diversity. They, this producer has some of the best white wines on the planet. I have some clients that only drink white wines and they're they're constantly for ordering from this producer but unfortunately for them they they don't drink red wine because they're missing out on this bad boy uh that just more for us yeah <clears throat> mm. Mm. now you're gonna have a lot of 
of similarities, in my opinion, to like the Montepulciano is going to have a little, little twinge of kind of that funky uh, earthiness, but really driven by by bold red fruit, even into plum, cherries, cranberries, uh, and and really super ripe. It very had, extracted very, fruit on very this. Very extracted, yeah. absolutely. Now this did have 12 months of oak, but only 20% was new oak. So the oak influence is more about the softening of the wine than the flavoring of the wine. Although that 20% does show some vanilla. It, it puts it in there, <clears throat> but I mean, you could, you could talk about, I think we could probably add on another six or seven things. This oh is yeah. reminiscent of what you're picking up on the palate. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of baking spice here. There's a, there's a vegetality in here. You can go in a lot of different directions. Hibiscus. Mm -hmm. Peppercorn, green peppercorn. It's almost like there's a variety of peppers. Yeah, you know, like you get the little blends of four mm -hmm. or five, and I have a, mm -hmm. a four or five pepper blend in my grinder at home right now, and it's very yeah. floral. Absolutely, you know, not, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a complex wine, and I've found that this grape over delivers in complexity, and really, a, a, I don't know how else to explain that. It's, it's, it is thought provoking, but yet, it can be quite simple at the same time <coughs> as far as drinkability. So this isn't a wine that needs food by any means, but it's so complex it would go great with so many foods. Well, it's gonna benefit from it. And, and you know, that first taste after having a Sav Blanc, I even had a little water in between. You know, this it really spikes this wine because your palate's um, initiated. Yeah, yeah. Say, you know, the, the, sure. the Sav Blanc really gets you know, all your receptors going because of the acid. And so it's really sharp on your first sip. And you have to take a few sips to kind of settle into this wine after the Sav Blanc, not when, we, when you're first tasting it out of the bottle. But I love how it changes in the glass. It softens as it, as, as it airs. And of course, that's with having five or six years too of, of age. But uh, sure. it, it's really... What a treat, and I, I'm not familiar with this grape at all. It's wonderful. Well, this is um, something that we don't do as often as we should, Chef. Like, um, guilty is charged, but... Um, well, why didn't you filter through the eight million wines that you had to, to pick I from know, this right? week and just have this all the time? Yeah, I, it, was, it was a challenge to, to narrow down what we had to did today. Um, this is I'm, I'm, I'm locked and loaded for a couple of weeks on on wine tastings, that's for sure. But you know the problem is they keep coming in, more on the way, more wines, more on I'm the like, way. Oh, I gotta have some of that. So again, we're we're in to another wine here that is, um, you know, it's sixteen bucks, and so we got two wines here that are from incredible producers. And um, boy, what a handsome presentation! Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that you, is, you, and if, you're if, feeling if, really good about you pulling this out with, with guests. I gotta, um, you know, um, just you know, I gotta. I'll always have a beef with Italian wine corks because they're almost always that glued together particle, hard as a rock. Mm. You know, whenever I'm trying to coravin to snag a taste out of them, I feel like I'm gonna lose a needle because it's so hard. They're using quality cork, um, soft. Um, this polished, logoed, I mean, just a really high-end cork. And the bottle, you know, we, this is a, a heavy bottle uh, in terms of a lot of table wines from Italy. So, again, it's not like they're cutting corners here. They are I they're like delivering. I feel like a spilt sun. And yeah. I need to make up for that. Good idea, that chef. Spillage. Good idea. I don't want to ruin the tasting notes so it's a uh, it's a value in so many ways in other words so it's also just delicious fabulous fabulous one and you're right on about the drinkability I mean it's it's plenty of elegance plenty of elegance but it's got a great drinkability as well our weather is changing chef we're mm -hmm. in the 70s every day fall is is technically here so you know, we're, we're pulling out those reds in the afternoon rather than the whites. I see something I like. What? 
What are these little morsels right here? Well, you're always telling me what grows together goes together. So how about if we went to this region of Italy, you would probably have an alpine style roasted garlic risotto with a uh, black truffle. But that's the bear wallow cheese mm. from uh, Looking Glass Creamery, Nashville. Of course, it's made in the alpine style, so it would, it would be a very familiar cheese in this region. Um, Northern Italy, Southern France, uh, Germany. And um, did a little risotto, put some roasted garlic cloves from uh, Wavery Crest, and shaved a little black truffle on top. Wow. Spoiled right. How's life? Perfect. When you all look back on this video years after I'm gone, you'll look at this video while I'm chowing down on these truffles. And drinking Italian wine. And you'll know where I'm in my happy place. <laughs> Life's pretty good. Mm. We find ways to make it not, but it's just simply not true. Life's good to us. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Well, here in... Um, Work. I don't have words. Well, we're going to let you enjoy that for a minute. <laughs> we got Mayberry Days cranking up here downtown. Wow. We got folks everywhere. We're seeing the entire fleet of squad cars every day. They've got everyone in going, and the llamas out early. The, the the cable car trolleys out early. So it's only Wednesday, and we've been seeing all these things for a couple of days now. So I think it really begins in earnest tomorrow. But today you can really feel the vibe downtown. Lots of uh, traffic, lots of tourists, lots of happy people. You know, just been planning their their vacations or their time away here for this and a whole slew of events planned for the weekend all around town and cross creek as always you remember all those huge, huge crowds Bus we, loads. when we were at cross creek we would do 400 people <clears throat> after yeah. the golf tournament mm -hmm. the, they do a big shows and i saw uh, i had to run an errand early this morning i left work and there was the band was unloading down there i mean it's just good vibe in town right mm -hmm. now man we, we love the this time of year festival season is what we call it you know you're getting car shows you're getting the uh, mayberry days we got autumn leaves around the corner we've got a truck show coming up we've got a farm show tractor thing coming it's just oh yeah yeah you know, it's just festival season yeah. and so downtown's really hopping between now and thanksgiving mm -hmm. um so yeah it's yeah, pretty, and, neat, um, pretty neat atmosphere uh, we're wishing a happy birthday to Joe Triani, Doc, Joe. Dr. Joe. Dr. Joe, he is the uh, commander. Yeah, he's flying in tonight, and he'll be celebrating his birthday week with us. His birthday was yesterday, but if you happen to see him out there on the streets of Mayberry, or on a, or in a table at Old North State Winery, mm -hmm. wish him happy birthday this week. He's a good man. We're we're happy to celebrate with him this weekend. Oh yeah, yep. He's been busy doing all those things that he does. Well, and, and commuting, you know, going back and forth, and, mm -hmm. you know, he's a busy, happy life. That's right. I know he's enjoying being retired, only having three jobs. Yeah, he's down to three jobs. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty exciting. Well, Chef, um, I think we knocked it out of the park. I know you did. Holy cow. Well, these wines are world class, as always, and just so complex and fun to drink, fun to talk about. We've got some fun food to mm -hmm. pair with it. I mean, I don't know, I, you do too much more and life is, your head might explode. That's right, we don't want that. So, until we see you again, whether it be here in person at 6 p.m. on Thursdays, or virtually as you meander through YouTube and discover this channel and go, who are these and, two and, guys? But I love them, so I'm gonna like, share, and subscribe. Mm -hmm. All those you gonna tell your friends things. about it? Yeah, post it to your Facebook pages. And tell people to check it out and have them mm -hmm. share it. And yeah. that, that increases um, our resources. And we'd be allowed to uh, to do even more wines and spend more time. Maybe even do two a week. Maybe we'll get sponsored by some wineries out there. How about that? We're all, I mean, we're always sponsored. We're always this. sponsored. Yes, for sure. But I mean, <laughs> it opened up a lot of uh, avenues for us to, to make this uh, virtual tasting uh, even more fun and uh, exploratory. Yeah, we're looking and getting into some actual recording equipment and making it sound and look a little bit better for you guys. But and I'm gonna this afternoon is actually one of my problems. I'm gonna have my 12 year old 
research a lot of this because she'll be an expert on it. Oh, yeah, because they are uh, far more advanced. My goodness, my 15 and 12 year old. They'll figure this stuff out, no problem. I'm sure mm -hmm. Mrs. Wishart could help with that too. She got a bunch of stuff for our youngest son for Christmas, you know, these microphones and all these added things to his laptop because he does a lot of spoken word things and movie stuff. So, right. Let's see what I can't find out. We might be doing a podcast by this time next week. Well, as always, a pleasure to talk wine, talk food, and talk life with you. And hopefully we can do this every single week, if not more. Maybe twice a week. Who knows? Hasta la vista, babies. Take care. Thank y'all.